the new window to Russia. Once one of the most close cities in the world, the biggest naval base in the Far East, Vladivostok. We are in one of the most demanding military academies in the country, the Nakhimov School. In the north of the town, 560 pupils have come together to celebrate the matriculation of a new comrade. Pupil Ivan Pelebushka has only been at the school for a few weeks. He already has the reflexes of a professional soldier. Pupils join at the age of 11. These young people are destined to become the elite of Russia's naval forces. The ceremony takes place in front of his mother. These young people will go on to defend this pearl of the Far East, the biggest city in Asia on the edge of the Pacific Ocean. In the winter, it's minus 25 degrees centigrade. Daily life continues on a frozen sea. The locals love to battle the elements and the severe weather. In the summer, the coast transforms into a Russian mini Saint-Tropez. By day and also by night. For a century and a half, it has been the impenetrable bastion of the Russian Navy. Now, the city is in the midst of a capitalist economic boom. The hills and the colorful houses are reminiscent of San Francisco. In this new Russian Eldorado, we'll see how fortunes can be made in just a few years. Very good. You next. You next. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> We'll visit one of the biggest casinos in the Far East, its preferred clients, the Chinese. In the winter, when temperatures fall, this Eldorado can also become a nightmare. The city offers little comfort to those left out in the cold. An investigation into the new Russia at the edge of the world. An eight-hour flight from Moscow, Vladivostok forms a crossroad between China, Japan and North Korea in the Russian Far East. The port was constructed in the 1850s around an inlet. 19th century Tsarist architecture still dominates the center of town. Until 1990, Vladivostok was close to foreigners and only accessible to citizens issued with special permit. Hundreds of tower blocks, social housing, bear witness to the communist past. The strategic position of the town made it an impenetrable fortress for 150 years. Today, the military port is home to 50 ships and 23 submarines.
Behind these gates is the Russian Navy's latest addition, an ultra-modern warship, the Sofasheni, or the perfect in English. Exceptionally, we have been given permission to board. Yes, Captain Dmitry Belinov is 33 years old. He was born in Vladivostok. He has been serving in the Russian Navy for 15 years. The Perfect cost nearly 130 million euros. The vessel is able to hide from radars. It can reach speeds of up to 28 knots or 48 kilometers per hour. Its weapons are state of the art. We see the cannon in action in this footage supplied by the Navy. The vessel's other main advantage is its anti-submarine missile firing system. It can fire 45 of them. Each costs 500,000 euros. Captain Blinov was selected from among the very best of the Russian Navy to command this warship and its 105 crew. His proudest moment was receiving President Vladimir Putin on board the ship in person. As a sign of the importance President Putin attaches to Vladivostok, he came in person to inaugurate the ship September last year. He wants to reinstate Russian military power, which this vessel symbolizes and the honor of welcoming him fell to Captain Blinov. The Russian president inspects the ship from top to bottom. It's a significant event. Russia wants to show its neighbors its muscles. Russia shares a 19-kilometer border with North Korea, a country in conflict with most of its neighbors. The city is within missile range of the unpredictable North Korean dictator. В данном свете что я могу сказать? Значит, в принципе, любой сосед может быть опасный. Вот. Но на данный момент пока у нас со всеми мир, со всеми мир. Поэтому мы люди военные, мы ничего, в принципе, не боимся и не переживаем. Если что-то вдруг может случиться, то это случится. Когда оно будет, тогда и будем разговаривать. А пока бояться нечего. For the sailor, commanding this jewel of the Russian Navy is the fulfillment of a childhood dream. В принципе, стать моряком, ну, я еще с детства уже. Были фильмы у нас патриотические, смотрели мы постоянно. Побывала как-то раз на визите, нас привели вот на соседний корабль, я еще маленьким был. Вот, показали, я посмотрел и приобщился. В принципе, после этого решил стать военным моряком. The officer completed his training just a few kilometers from there, at the Nachimov Naval School.
The establishment has been extremely successful since Putin came to power. The pupils go through a selection process. The pupils are in class eight hours a day, six days a week. The principal is a rear admiral, one of the highest ranks of the Russian Navy, Rear Admiral Burakov. Today's program, the pupils must write a poem describing the town's glory. Three minutes of time, or even two, will be enough to prepare what is такое Синквин по нашей теме Владивосток, город воинской славы. Обсуждаем в группах. At the top of the class is Denis, born in Vladivostok. He is only just eleven. Denis, заканчиваем. Глаголы. Гордиться будет расцветать. Защитил. Спасибо, ребят, что вы. Each reads out a verse. Жить, служить, гордиться. Да. Город воинской славы. Владивосток. Очень тонко подмечено, что действительно Владивосток – город воинской славы. There is even a song dedicated to the glory of the city. The pupils know it off by heart. The trainee sailors are all boarders. Here is Denise dormitory. They are two to a room. The young pupils have very little free time. I'm afraid I can't make it to the cinema tonight. Every spare moment is dedicated to revision. As with adults, the children each have a rank, and the highest ranked here is Dennis. He is head of barracks and in charge of three comrades. А главного это проверять заправку кровати, чтобы они были натянуты, не было никаких складок. Проверять заправку имущества, чтобы она была ровной. Проверять учебники, как бы утром, когда ты выходишь на занятия, и он, ну, как бы вообще, в общем, следит за порядком. The inside of the room is simple; only a small personal touch is allowed. А мое личное вот этот корабль, который давно уже стоит у моего, стоял у моего деда и. И почему ты, почему ты решил стать военным? Я решил стать военным, так как я хочу стать подводником. А почему? Почему тебя это интересно? Ну, не знаю, мне как-то с детства привлекала военная карьера, профессия. Спасибо. Ваши идеи, с чем это связано? Of course, the pupils study the traditional subjects. Maths, geography, physics and electronics at the school. Три торпеды, крейсер уничтожил. Линкор, 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 шел. But here there is a subject which doesn't exist elsewhere, the naval battle lesson. <laughs> a simulation program where the pupils are plunged into extremely realistic battle situations. They play against each other in teams. Победили линкоры в составе шести кораблей против трех эсминцев. Скажем так, можно было. Плюс в нашем учреждении, потому как у нас морская специфика, то корабли позволят э, нахимовцам изучить историю кораблестроения, историю вооружения, потому что мировых, опять же, мировых э, держав, потому что присутствуют не только корабли отечественные, точно так же присутствуют корабли других наций, то есть ну, стран.